Over. Now I've got that dastardly masterpiece video out of the way, which caused me no end of trouble from having the actual thing say that it's all corrupted and have to start again, to then actually saving the thing, saying that it's all okay, only to watch it back and find that there were successive bits near the end that had no sound, and every time I had to try and put new sound on, it would then push the mute bit further along. So yeah, that's why that took a long time to get out and I'm annoyed by that because you know it was like a few weeks late and you know a few weeks to me it's a good few videos. So I've got to clear the backlog now. Let's have a bit of a February Twitter thon. It's not really going to be a catch up um, because I can sort of foresee through my magical powers of I've already bought them that I will have more for this month of February to show you so there's no point doing a catch up and just sort of closing off the month. But let's get through the stuff anyway. First off, something you might have seen if you were very eagerly eyed in my Masterpiece Optimus Prime video, I've got a Generations Gold Fire. Wee, wee, wee. It's the Bumblebee I wanted from Generations, I guess. I sort of was perfectly okay with getting that yellow Bumblebee when that first came out and we all first saw pictures of that. I thought, okay, it's a, it's a comic Bumblebee. I'm down with that. That's fine. And then I heard that he turns green after a while. So I went, hell no, I ain't touching that. So um, I was glad that we got a repaint, um, which is much nicer, in Gold Fire. I mean, yeah, his name's a bit weird. He should be called Gold Bug, but he shouldn't because as these are RDW deluxes. Gold Bug isn't actually a rebuilt Bumblebee in RDW. Gold Bug, I think, is actually dead right now. If I remember rightly. Um, so this guy, who is a rebuilt Bumblebee, can't be Goldbug, and let's face it, these days the name is a bit silly when he isn't a Volkswagen Beetle. What he is, is a, oh, it's a stonkingly nice car mode. Well, let's see, take these stupid blue things off. Can we just talk for a minute about what these are? Because I don't know what these are. Uh, are they sort of stinger things? With these bits? I, I can't tell if these see-through bits are meant to be blast effects, or if they're meant to be energy blades I don't know but you stick them on the sides of the car and it looks like it's sprouting some sort of weird jet turbines and I don't really see how they're weapons until you put them together and then okay that's a gun sort of it's weird I, I can't say I like it um, but you know at least he comes with a gun unlike the other classics bumblebee that I have which is the old one that just came with a jet ski so discarding those bits of flim flam let's drink in this very nice car the shape of it, along with all the colours, is what I like. It's just flawless. I really like it. It's a really hench sort of muscle car. And it feels like ages since we had a car mode that just looks this nice, you know? I mean, yeah, Prime churned out some nice cars and they were sort of semi-realistic, but still a little bit cartoony. And this is just, just a nice new car mode. I mean, I know we're going to get loads of those in the new movie line and... You know, it's still a little bit like movie Bumblebee in a way. It's still a little bit Kamari, but it's it's got enough different bits. It just feels like a completely new, unique looking good car. And it's really solid and doesn't make a horrible rattly noise. I mean, yeah, these back wheels are pegging ones, but they're not all horrible and rattly like on other figures. It just feels good. Yeah, just, oh, I really like it. But I am showing you it in this mode because I, I guess the robot mode's okay, but it's it's just not great. It feels like all of the joints in the robot mode are sort of in the wrong place. And it makes it feel very awkward. It's really hard to get into pose and look good. Because it's just like, yeah, all the joints feel like they're in just slightly the wrong place. Like he doesn't really get a lot of movement. But the joints are there, and that's the frustrating thing. And I guess, yeah, after the Toy Fair news, I'm a bit frustrated to find out that this is what we're going to get as Nightbeat. This mould is going to become Nightbeat. I'm not sure how I feel about that. When we first saw pictures of a possible Generations Nightbeat, it was going to be a jazz repaint, and I didn't really like that either. The robot mode on that wouldn't have been good enough, wasn't Nightbeat enough, but we would have got a really nicely poseable robot. And the alt mode would have been like a Porsche, like he's supposed to be. This is in no way close to being a Porsche, so why have they chosen this to be Nightbeat now? I mean, yeah, the robot mode is a little bit more accurate with some of the where the car bits turn up and the detailing and all that sort of thing. But it's going to be really awkward and it's going to turn to a car that looks like this and this doesn't fit Nightbeat. 
no matter how much you paint this up like the car at a Wayne's World, it's not really going to look like Nightbeat. And I'm a bit annoyed about that because, A, I bought this because I wanted a version of this mold that wasn't Bumblebee. And let's face it, if I could have had this as Nightbeat and no one else would have been perfectly happy to just skip this one as well. Um, but B, I just really want them to do a proper mold for Nightbeat. And I can't be the only person who wants that, surely. But Goldfire then, he's recommended simply because he just, he just feels good. The plastic is delicious for this day and age, for what we've been getting. The plastic is, oh, it's so good. It just feels solid. That's, that's the best way to describe this, solid. And he's shiny, and he's got really nice blue see-through stuff and the normal blue robotic stuff. It just looks good, and it's not going to go green on you. Next up, we've got a little bit of a grail, I should say. When it got to the point where it was sort of leading up to my birthday, I was thinking, ooh, I really ought to just jump on something that has been on my eBay watch list for quite a while, um, and it has been on there for quite a while. It's been on there since I started using eBay, to be perfectly honest. While Goldfire got to me in the same day I got Masterpiece Optimus Prime, these guys, even though I ordered them a bit earlier, they took a little while to come because they came all the way from Taiwan. And so they should, because they're United figures. Yes, I've got United Rumble and Frenzy. After all this time, I've wanted these for years and they do not disappoint. Rumble and Frenzy. Frenzy and Rumble. Um, I, I don't know. I really want to skirt around what these two are called because let's just get this out of the way now. I'm a rib fur person because I already own two figures that are blue that are called Rumble. So, you know, in my headspace, Rumble is the blue one. These two, however, sort of, yeah, throws a bit of discrepancy into that. Because the box says that the blue one's Frenzy and the red one is Rumble. Uh, okay, Japan, if that's the way you want to play it. I thought that everything that Takara threw out was meant to be uber cartoon accurate which would mean if they follow the cartoon that Frenzy is the red one, surely? Uh, I don't know, maybe in the Japanese dub they actually got the names around the right way. Because of course, you know, the toys and the comics sort of came first and in that Rumble was the red one. And then the cartoon showed up and blam, let's have it around the other way to confuse people. Yeah, I'm fine with Rumble being the blue one because he was the first Rumble I sort of knew about. When I watched the cartoon, he was blue, he was Rumble. He was new to me, thereby I learnt the character of Rumble being the blue one. And I'm fine with all of that because this figure here, which I hold in my hands, which might be called Frenzy, but I'm going to call Rumble because this is what I wanted to come from the Reveal the Shield line. This mould is one that never saw the light of day through Hasbro because it was going to be a scout, it was going to be the best scout ever and I was really looking forward to it because there were pictures that were leaked of some of these in China or somewhere and there was going to be a downshift out of hubcap and there was going to be a breacher repaint and there was going to be a proper little scout rumble with gold guns and I was so stoked and then they got cancelled because Dark of the Moon was going to roll along and everyone in shop retailer land said I don't want any of these old Transformers, no, you've got to get me the new ones, get me the movie ones, get me them, that's what they want, that's what the people want. And of course, you know, they just got bumped into limbo and I'm sure there must be someone out there, there must be this guy in China who took the pictures of these, must have these in the package, they must exist somewhere. And I sort of want to make it my mission to find them but it's just impossible and they were a nice little wave of figures that would have been a perfect last hurrah to the scout class that no one ever saw. So that sucks majorly and it's something I'm still annoyed about two years down the line. No, three years down the line now, Christ. So I had to get this United set with these two because A, they're the only way to get this mold um, and B, you know, just can't deny owning this mold. When I wanted this so much, when I saw those pictures, I couldn't just sort of, you know, say now nah, they're, they're expensive Japanese ones, I'm never going to get them, and say I'm not going to get them. I pushed through and chucked 40 quid. <laughs> 40 quid at two scout figures that are the same but different colours. What? Yeah, I may have 
been a bit mad there with spending money, but honestly, these are so good. But apart from the fact it was my birthday and it was a bit of a reason to celebrate and spend a bit of money, I thought it just felt like the right time to get these because now this is the design for Rumble and Frenzy that you will see in the comics. And it just feels like, yeah, that's nice. Now they're comic accurate figures and, you know, it just makes them feel like they can stand with all the modern generation stuff, even though they are, of course, a hell of a lot better. Yeah, I've got them in two different modes just to make it easier to illustrate the fact that, well, they're the same figure and I can just say, this is what the tank's like, this is what the robot's like. They're good because, and here comes a really long list, they are perfect little robot representations of Rumble and Frenzy detailing is just excellent and they're really poseable and they've got sparkly gold paint on their chests and their head sculpts are great but for some reason they both seem to sort of automatically have this sort of you what mate look because their necks are sort of like that something must be going on with the joint because their heads are like constantly at an angle and you can sort of fix it but they'll just sort of go back to being like that i guess it's in character mildly They've got clip-on guns. Oh, how long has it been since they've had a good clip-on gun? And of course, you get two of them each, which are both the same. And then, of course, because it's a set of two, you get four to go and stick on loads of old good generations and reveal the shield figures, and it feels great to have a load of new clip-on things. One thing about these lovely clippy guns, though, is that the ball joints inside them are really scarily tight. It's like they must have coated the silver stuff on the inside of the joint as well and that was probably a bad move because it's thickened it up and makes these cards to move and it, yeah it's scary another thing about silver paint only the red one has silver paint on his face the blue fella has white paint on his face i don't know why there's that difference when their paint apps are pretty much identical otherwise but then that's not the only gimmick they've got because you turn their arms round and fold stuff up and they've got the pile drivers that actually work and the spring loaded like lug nuts fists oh that's just the best i mean i would have been really sort of just happy with the clip on guns but having the pile drivers as well get out of town these are just the best scouts ever simply because they pack so much in to each of them it's just insane and it just makes me even more sad to think that i could have got this whole great little package for like eight quid if these had only come out in 2011 but no 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 we can't have that can we we can't have nice things yeah i just totally adore these little robots uh, it's just that whole gimmick combination that's gone into these if these haven't been designed by the same guy who did lug nut i will eat my proverbial hat because they just feel so like the same thing because of the whole spring-loaded punchy thing and the clip-on compatibility and the overall just excellent detail these are just the best scouts and you know because they are the best it makes a fitting yeah last sound of the trumpet for the scout class for me because let's face it, now I don't think we're going to get Scout class coming back anytime soon. And now I've got all the moulds I want from that. So there we go. These are just flawless, flawless, flawless. Let's talk about the tanks. They've got bronze treads, which is nice. And the turrets go round. And you've got a little turret in there that goes round with this sort of machine gun proboscis. Um, and the guns can go up and down. Again, just flawless little detailing mounds of goodness he just should have come out somehow through hasbro the west needs to have these properly it's such a shame because i don't know any alt modes that are like these yeah they're tanks and you know there are hardly any scout class tanks to begin with but these to me i, I don't know if this is what they actually are but to me they seem like little drone tanks because they've got a big red eye at the front here it's like some sort of uav camera that makes me think they're sort of remote control droney tanky things yeah never seen anything like this before and then you get really shiny decepticon symbols as well literally nothing to fault here at least design wise because the builds on them are less than good um well okay yeah they're good but for a takara figure i really would have expected better build quality the legs are loose their hips you know are, are loose um rumble here it's not rumble but i'm gonna call in that because that's what the box says has two left feet 
It's not really great, is it, Takara? But then on top of that, the tolerances between the two, I mean, these are the same figures, just in different colours. They shouldn't have different tolerances, but they do. These guns are, well, uh, these guns are easier to get on and off than the blue guy's guns. Uh, this one has tighter shoulders that are, like, really scarily tight, as if I might be almost bending the strut they're on. But this guy doesn't. This guy's turret moves a lot tighter than this guy's turret. So if there's anything that really puts me off these, well, nothing puts me off these because they're just, oh, they're just what I wanted. But if there's anything that makes me a little disappointed with them when I handle them, it is tolerances on the joints. I mean, yes, I could tighten up their hips with a few coats of varnish or whatever, but it just feels like I shouldn't have to be doing that for the first use of this mould to be released. I shouldn't need to be applying things like varnish to them because there's some sort of degradation. I mean, yeah, the Hasbro one might have been all made and there might have been a full production of that that never came out and then Takara got the mould. But let's face it, these are the first versions of this Rumble and Frenzy mould and it shouldn't have these problems. So there we go, my first ever United figures and I was really chuffed with them. I mean, they're the only United figures I've ever wanted simply because they are moulds I wanted that you couldn't get otherwise. But yeah, I'm really happy with them and the whole sort of United experience is quite nice as well because of course the packaging is really slick and it's just interesting with nice art and pictures and loads of writing I can't read. But now we move down a notch but still have a good level of enjoyment because I can still be heartily satisfied by walking into a shop, spying new things, being excited by them and purchasing one of them. As I have done with ConstructBot's Breakdown. I walked into Sainsbury's and I saw a big fat wad of all these new ConstructBots I'd done never seen before like. And I went through them and thought, oh this one's good, oh this one's good. But ultimately I think it was Breakdown who sort of caught my eye the most. I can't reiterate enough times that these are just good value for money. This is the smallest price point, but you're still getting a figure that's the same size as all the rest. You've just got a few less parts. Or the parts are a little bit less substantial. Uh, yeah, he does feel very plasticky. Um, he has got some rather large parts, like the sort of truck cab piece on his back, um, that do feel a little bit, I don't know, insubstantial I think is the word. But come on, it's a nice construction-y guy. You put him together yourself and he's big and he's beefy and you can just change him up how you like. I don't need to keep singing this same song with construct bots every time I get a new one. You should know by now that these are just good toys and I'm happy that there's a good lot of new ones because I was starting to sort of just lose interest in the line, I've got to say. But yeah, a nice injection of new characters, nice obscure characters as well, like Breakdown and other ones were like Dead End and Silverbolt. I mean, when has there recently been a Silverbolt in any piece of fiction or anywhere? But yeah, they all look good and I do want to go back and get all of them, to be honest just because they're so satisfying. Just pick them up off the shelf and it's a nice little box that feels like it's got a lot in it and it's only a tenner. And you're getting something that's Voyager sized here. It feels like a long time ago that you can throw a good round 10 pound at a transformer and get something really satisfying. So yeah, I think that's what we've got going on here now with construct box. But what about Breakdown himself? I've said he's hench, yeah. He, he, I mean, he's not really any more hench than any of the other construct bots, but he does sort of feel wider somehow. Maybe it's his chest being a nice big jeepish piece. He comes with a little red axe that's covered in ports and clips and stuff. He moves like every other construct bot. He's got good colors and a few bits of paint and an angry red face. It's not really a lot I can say. Either you look at this and think you like it, or you look at it and think you hate it. So I don't think I'm going to win anyone over on the old construct bots argument this late in the game. But I like Breakdown. Maybe you will too. As far as parts on him go, I think he uses a lot of Hound parts. I don't have Hound. And now I don't think I'm going to buy Hound because I spent a tenner when Hound is 15 quid and got most of Hound's parts only in blue. He basically turns into a GP trucky, just beefy vehicle which does look good for a construct bot car but some of the parts do feel a little bit like oh okay the quality is a little bit down on what i'm previously aware of his decepticon symbol for instance it's just a solid piece of purple plastic when before it was a white piece of plastic with the purple painted on 
so that looks cheap. But then, when you look at his box, and I'm going to lean over here, to the shelf below where you can't really see construct bots anymore, just so I could keep it a secret as to what I might have. On his box, you get a proper Decepticon symbol, like the proper normal classic one, when every single construct bot before this point will have had a movie one on there. I mean, yeah, why do they have movie ones on there? But keep a bit of consistency, you know? I'm perfectly happy with just keeping one symbol along these and not suddenly changing it and just making it look a bit sloppy. I mean, I may be the only person in the world who displays these boxes in this sort of form, um, but it doesn't look right now, because this stands out on my shelf. It's, it's a bit jarring to my sensibilities, I have to say. I mean, I guess it's good that Hasbro finally realised they'd sort of done something a bit silly with putting movie Decepticon logos on these, and now they've changed it to what it should be, but they should have just left it and kept a bit of consistency. Another thing with the packaging now, they seem to all have this build and transform sticker on there, which has obviously been applied later because it's not in a billion languages and it's stuck over bits. Sometimes their name itself I've seen. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think finally Hasbro realized that these things weren't selling because nowhere on the box does it actually outline the fact that you can put it together, then transform it without having to take it apart. That's something I sort of brought up in my review that I did of the Soundwave one, because when you look at the picture on the back, it totally looks like you're having to take it apart to get it into the other mode. This whole graphic here tells you that to get from robot round to vehicle, in between you have to take it apart. Yeah, they should have thought that through a bit better. Oh, it's probably been quite a long one already, this video, isn't it? But hold on to your hats, because we're about to reach the climax. Oh man, what I have to show you here is is baffling. It's not anything special, far from it. Um, but basically, the new Beast Hunters Voyagers came out. The ones that everyone's like, oh, they're just simplified Cyberverse figures, kind of thing. They're just big ones are the little things, and it's not good. Why do I want that? It's rubbish. But I bought one, mainly because... I didn't have a Voyager Predaking, and this one's massive! So how can I say no when I see it for 15 quid in Smythes? Yeah. <laughs> uh, a bit lost for words here. This is the biggest Voyager figure I own. You know why it's the biggest Voyager figure I own? Because it's actually pretty close to leader size. Yeah. How this came in regular Voyager packaging, I don't understand. How does this fit in here? There was some sort of wizardry involved in packaging this it was really crammed in there and it felt like it was bursting out of the box and i love it it's so good i don't care how simple it is honestly doesn't bother me one iota that this takes less steps to transform than the cyberverse version yeah it's just so good it's massive it's made of light piping it's got the biggest sword i've ever seen come with the transformer I mean, look at that. In my hand, it's pretty much the size of a real meat cleaver. It's a massive blade of hellfire that has a suitably metal name, the Infernum Blade. And I love that, and that's good to give to other figures, to give them a giant burning sword. Why wouldn't you want to give other Transformers a giant burning sword? Uh, and then he's got a little missile launcher. Um, yeah, it's a bit tidgy compared to the rest of him, um, but it's actually the gun that he sort of has in the show, I think. I only remember Predaking flicking out guns from his hands once, but apparently this is more show accurate than anything else, so that's cool. And it fires a little missile, which is actually exactly the same missile as the Cyberverse one. So that is literally the only reused piece of tooling in this whole thing, a missile. I ain't even mad, bro. Because this whole thing, it's completely different to anything that might have come before. It's just glorious. I didn't really like the normal Voyager Predaking. It didn't really look very good. Covered in default grey and no paint and just looked boring. This guy, well yeah he has got default grey and not a lot of paint, but oh he looks so much better because of all the light piping and if I just put his wings out like this you can see how good they look and how big they are. And all of that is even before we get into the <coughs> cacophonous <coughs> click that this thing offers at literally every joint. Are you hearing this? Ah, feels good. It has been 
an age, like a literal geological age since I have had a figure that has this much click. It's big and it clicks everywhere. Why don't you want one? I'm probably selling this to quite a few people now, I imagine. Um, but good God, this thing's just amazing. It's so satisfying just to have a big clickety figure. 15 quid, it feels like I've bought something that should be closer to 50. That is literally how good this feels, how solid and massive it is. Just to reinforce the fact of how massive it is, uh, I'll put a link down there somewhere to a set of pictures on Flickr that I've done which compare it to other figures and show you how it's crammed in the box and all that sort of thing, if you're interested. It literally towers over every other Voyager figure that Beast Hunters has spat out. I mean, I've only got three others, Optimus, Ultramagnus and Darksteel, and this is a good, like, two inches taller than all of them. I shouldn't need to say any more. But I'm going to, because would you look at this giant dragon? It's, oh god, it's massive. It really, this is where it feels a lot bigger than a Voyager figure, because you put this next to, like, Voyager Darksteel, and that looks tiny compared to this. It's got massive wings, and it's got a big tail that, yeah, it's just a sword, and it's really thin, but whatever. There's a port on here, and you can stick the missile launcher on there. Um, but that's simply because it has nowhere else to go. It doesn't really look good like that. One downside. Let's find some upsides. It's got big clickety dragon arms and the dragon legs move. And oh, look at it. His head moves. And here we hit the real gripe I have with it. The singular gripe I have with it. His jaw doesn't open. Oh, you need that for a giant dragon. He needs to be able to sort of roar and breathe fire and... Just do things in my imagination with an open mouth rather than just sort of be like mm. I want him to be all roaring like <laughs> not just like <laughs> bit of a shame because everyone should have a giant Predator King like this I know that those giant light up beast fire Predator Kings are like on clearance like everywhere in America um, they're not over here um, I don't actually remember the last time I saw one over here. Um, but this is approximately the same size as one of those. So if you're in the UK and you get to a Smads and you get one for 15 quid, you've made an excellent purchase, my friend, because this is a hell of a lot of plastic and click for 15 quid. Oh, there we have it. That's all my stuff that I've sort of built up since I got my masterpiece Optimus Prime. Basically, it just feels good to be out front of the shadow of that masterpiece video where I can just get being creative again and doing all these proper little updates. And hopefully soon I'll be able to do some more of those building ones that I was foreshadowing. Ooh, let's see. I'm actually starting to plan it all out as a bit of a series almost. So hopefully I can show you some interesting stuff and be a bit more entertaining and still show you some Lego men that I randomly picked. But who knows? Right now I'm feeling good for just getting back into the swing of doing videos because that masterpiece one was just a soul destroyer, to be perfectly honest. I'm glad it's out of the way. Party on!